The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We had been discussing chapter 2, Sankhya Yoga, Yoga of Knowledge. Bhagavan gave us a road map for our journey from ignorance about ourselves to the knowledge of the Supreme. So we have seen, step by step, how can I come out of this ignorance about myself? I consider this body as me, this mind as me, this intellect as me. The idea such as, I think, therefore I am, creates attachment to my mind and my intellect. And this body serves as my vehicle for all my experience in this world, which creates attachment to it. And therefore, I consider death of this body as my death. I have not seen anybody coming back after he dies. Therefore, I consider the death of this body as my death. So Bhagavan said, Dehino asmin yatha dehe kaumaram yavonam jara tatha dehantara prapti diraha tatra namuhyati. Then you have seen changes in your life. You have seen in your journey various states of existence. You existed as a child, as a youth, and also as an old man now. He said, you are not confused by that. That does not delude you. These experiences which are different from each other has never confused you who you are. You always consider this is me. When I say I, it remains same no matter what state I was in, whether as a child, a young man or an old man. But once said that did not confuse you, this also should not confuse you when you leave this body and then take up another body. This is a hypothesis for us now. Because we do not have really any experience. But an idea was introduced to us of a reincarnation. That this life is not only life. You have lived many lives before. Where you created all your vasanas and tendencies. I have tendency to be artistic. Somebody else's tendency to be athletic. And the other person is more intellectual. Where all these tendencies are coming from. But once these tendencies are because of your experiences in the past, before even you were born. And then he basically said that this journey is not is the one of inactivity. This journey is of activity. This journey you have to be active all your life. Then the question is how do I act in this world? So Bhagavan said, Sukha dukkha same kritva labha labha jaya jayo tatha yuddhaya yujyasva. That with a balanced mind, you should act in this world. That basically simple advice Bhagavan gave. Samatvam yoga uchyate. Create balance in your mind, in all the various experiences you are experiencing, and then you will be on your path to your destination. Your destination is to find perfect happiness. But once said, you will find that if you act in this world with a balanced mind. Then my question is now, how do I keep a balanced mind with varied experiences in my life? And Bhagavan said, yukta asita mat paraha. Keep an overarching goal which encompass everything. All your experiences and all your feelings and all your thoughts, then you will be able to balance your mind. If an overarching goal, then that goal becomes the destination. The goal will be reflected in, in those experiences. So we have all experienced that when you are in love, when you are fixated with one object, then you see that in everything. When you fall in love, you see 
that person in all other persons you see. She must, that must be her, that must be him. Because my mind is so overpowered by that goal that I see everything in that. When I become first time a father or mother, in all children I see my child. Then when I first time become grandfather, I see my granddaughter and grandson in all children. Because whatever is taking over your mind, you will reflect that in all your experiences. If your mind is focused on me, if I am your supreme goal, then I will be reflected in all your experiences. So everything I see, I will see his manifestation. Everything I hear, I will hear his voice, his flute in that sound. So everything will become divine. Experience may be anything, but now my mind will not assign any other value but a divine value to it. Bhagavan said, Yukta Asita Matparaha. But to become Yukta Asita, Bhagavan says, Tani Sarvani Samyamya. By controlling all your senses, Vasehi Indriyani, and one who is controlling the senses, Tasya Pragna Pratishtita. His wisdom is steady. What he is seeing is to be seen. When my wisdom is steady, my mind is balanced, what I'm seeing is the reality. If my wisdom is not steady, if I assign different things as different values, then my wisdom is not steady. The result of that would be that I will not have any sukha. I will not be at peace. So last verse which we have discussed says, Na asti buddhi a yuktasya. One who has no overarching goal. Yukta, one who is identified with the supreme goal. My supreme goal is really having sukha and no dukkha. This is my supreme goal. That overarching goal in my life is to avoid dukkha and have sukha only. Ultimate happiness. If that's my overarching goal, that happens when, when you are identified with the supreme self. And Bhagavan said the one who is not identified with the supreme goal is ayuktaha. He has no goal. So anything will become his goal. Whatever the experience I have, I'll be attached to it. And then I will not know where my happiness lies. It is something like when I was in India or in Africa, there were only few choices you had. You know, Even ice cream, there were only like two or three choices. Kesar Pista or Kaju Drax. You know. When I go to Low Garden in Ahmedabad, it was very clear. I want one of them. It's not really a big question mark. I come here and the Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. How do I know which flavor is good? If I taste all 31 of them, then I come to a conclusion which one I like. But by the time I get to 31st flavor, I forget what the first flavor tastes like. I start all over again. So I really have no clue where my happiness lies because every time I taste something, I think that's it. And then I said, but, but there are 30 other flavors. So I need to try them also. Maybe there is one better than this. So Bhagavan said, one who is ayuktaha, who does not have this fixed goal of what he is trying to achieve, he will not have any buddhi. Na asti buddhi ayukta. So he does not have wisdom what my goal is and where my happiness is. Na cha ayuktasya bhavana. He also does not have any identification. His identification shifts from one goal to another. Nacha abhavayataha santi. And one who is not identified with one goal, how can we have any peace? Because he is agitated in his mind. Even when I am achieving something, I think this may not be it. There may be other things which other people are getting and I am not getting it. I should be going after them. I may be missing out something because of this coronavirus stay at home. People may be out there doing something. Let me find out. So Bhagavan said, Nacha Abhavayata Santehi, one who does not have this identification with his goal, he does not have Santi. And Asantasya Kutha Sukham, the one who is agitated, wherever is happiness for him. We all know this, that when mind is agitated, there is no Sukha. Sukha I only experience when there is no thought in my mind. As Swamiji used to say, I minus I want is happiness. As long as there is I want, there cannot be any happiness. 
as long as I want, there cannot be any peace in mind because there is agitation. I don't have it. How do I get it? I must be doing something which is not right or I may not be doing something which I should be doing. Now, those things create asanti. Such a person cannot have sukha. If your goal is to get sukha, you need to quieten your mind. And then Bhagavan gives why it is very important that you start with controlling your senses, which we have seen dhyayato, visayan, punsaha. If I let my senses get impression of the sense objects, then I keep thinking about them, then I'll fall from the ladder. So it says, Indriyanam hi charatam yat mano anu vidhiyate. How does that work is, if my mind follows the wandering senses, senses are involuntarily going out and getting impressions of the objects they are contacting. If I keep my eyes open and see outside the window, there will be impression of what's outside of the window. But what I will see will depend on the disposition of my mind. So I see my friend Omi Narang. Every day he puts a one picture of a bird or a flower or something on his Facebook post. Now when I see outside, I see buildings. I see, well, that guy's house looks a little better. I think it could have been designed a little better than this. So this position of my mind is to the built world, not natural world. So the senses are involuntarily going out there and getting impressions of the sense objects outside. That's their job. It is the mind which creates impressions. So it says, Indriyanam hi charatam. These wandering senses, the mind follows these wandering senses. In other words, getting attached to each object it sees and wants to keep thinking about it. Tadasya harati pragnam. Now obviously he does not have wisdom of what is right and what is wrong for him what to accept and what to reject. So, tasya harati pragna vayuhu na evam ambhasi. So, the picture is worth thousand words. So, Bhagavan gives this picture that just as a boat on the waters, if there is no controller, there is no boatman, and it just boat by itself, it will be tossed by the wind. Wherever wind takes it, it will go. There is no fixed destination. If your mind follows every object which is perceived through the senses, then it will be tossed from one object to another. It does not have a goal and therefore it does not have any destination. My destination was happiness, but I lost my way because I have not fixed my destiny. I do not know where to go. And I'm just driving, but do not know where I'm going. And then Bhagavan says, Tasmad, Yasya Mahabhav and therefore, O Mahabhav, O mighty arm, Bhagavan gives Arjuna a little boost of courage that you are capable of doing so, of controlling your senses. Nigruhitani Sarvasaha Indriyani Indriyarthebhya Therefore, one who has controlled all his senses from the sense objects, Tasya Pragna Pratishrita his wisdom is steady. This is a very difficult verse to understand because we think it is impossible. Impossible to not have any perception of this world outside. The very job of senses is to perceive the world outside. If your mind is completely inert and is not getting any impression, then I'll be basically a dead person. Swamiji says if that's the case, if you're not perceiving anything, just let us know and we'll do your last rites. So you are a dead person if that's the case. It is not possible for us to do that. The very nature of senses is to get impressions and the very nature of mind is to get attached to those impressions. But what I will see as my mind depends on the disposition of my mind. If I have already fixed a goal that my goal is to have ultimate happiness and therefore I have to fix my mind on the ultimate self, you know, I will see the manifestation of that self in everything which I hear, I taste, I touch. So the people who are bhakta, when they listen to music, they see Krishna bhakti in it. So to them, the music is for 
achieving God's bhakti. Otherwise, I sing film songs and it has different emotions in it. As I told you before that Swami Dhirananda says, Nilkanji, I can come to your music parties, but you can sing this film song in bhajans. If you convert this film song into bhajans, then I can enjoy them. So you can use the same song and make it in a bhajan. Now, same music you're enjoying is Bhagwan Bhakti. Bhagwan says, one who has this supreme goal, whatever impression his senses gets, he will see Bhagwan in it. And therefore, Tasya Pragna Pratishtita, he sees the right reality. Whatever he's seeing, he's seeing in the right way. The last verse we will discuss today says, Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarti Sanyami. It's a very poetic verse. For other people, which is night, the Sanyami is awake. In other words, that which is ignorance for all the beings, all beings are ignorant about this, their true self. Tasyam Jagarti Sanyami. Sanyami is very awake, very aware of the presence of the Supreme Self. Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisa Pashyato Mune hai. And where everybody is awake, the reality which everybody is aware of, in my waking world, I am very aware of my reality. Because I am very sure that this is real. I am real, this world is real, my house is real, my car is real, my job is real. It's very real. But once it, that which I as an individual is very sure, then Muni sees that as ignorance. Awareness about my limitedness creates ignorance about my Supreme Self. And I use this verse very uh, liberally when I was in architecture school. Because I used to tell people that, look at in Bhagavad Gita, it says, Ya Nisa Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarde Sanyami. Because we architecture students, we always work at night. And my room partners were always all engineering students. They are pretty disciplined. They will work during the day, maybe a little bit in night, but they will have nice hours for sleep. And we had no really any time limit at night, how long we work. So we used to call it all-nighters. And they will sleep at night. So I used to tell them, look, we are all Munis. All we architecture students are Munis. You know, we work at night. And then when you work, we sleep. Ram kare esa ho jai, meri nindya tohi mil jai. You know. So you can sleep and I can work. So Bhagwan said that when I see the world as real as limited being, that's my ignorance. But when I'm awakened to the higher state of consciousness, which we have seen is called Turiya Avastha, the fourth state of consciousness. I'm very aware that the world of my dream is not real. When I wake up, I have no confusion, no delusion about the world of my dream. That world was unreal. This is real. I'm not aware of my deep sleep because there was no experience. But as a waker, I can vouch for it that I had a good sleep. So these three states I'm very clear about. I have no experience of my deep sleep. Therefore, it is nothing but a pure ignorance about myself. In my dream, I was confused about what is real and what is unreal. Therefore, I was seeing what is unreal as real. I'm not Bill Gates, but I thought I'm Bill Gates in my dream. But in waking world, I'm a very wise person. I see my world as it is. I am a limited being, I have a job, tomorrow I have to make sure that whether from home or at work, I am there. There I consider very real, and Bhagavan said, the Muni who is awakened to this expanded consciousness, where he sees that his self is not this mortal being, he sees that even this is unreal. What I consider knowledge right now is nothing but my ignorance. What I consider ignorance right now about my Supreme Self, I don't know whether God exists or not, whether I have any relationship with God or not, when I'm in trouble whether God is going to come or not, even though I pray or not. Let me make sure that even though I pray, I'll, I'll make sure that I take care of myself. He says, such an idea is an ignorance for me. Muni is not confused by that. 
he is very aware what the reality is that my existence is permanent. That which exists will continue to exist. That which is impermanent, that which is mithya, that which is temporary will not be there tomorrow. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount at podbean.com forward slash Neil Bhatt or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Hari Om. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shantihi 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om